Okay, so we are on lesson five. This is the last lesson of the Christian Basics uh, Deception course. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope, we, I, I, I hope you've learned a lot. And uh, we're going to talk about um, tithes and offering. Um, and so this gets us to, to really the last thing. Um, when we when we decide to, decide to serve God, um, there's the things that we instantly get to experience like joy. But then there's the things that we have to give up and that kind of hurt. And this would be like, for instance, our time, um, worship, or reading the Bible or prayer. And uh, then there's our finances. And you can really tell when somebody has surrendered their heart to God in a large bit by how willing they are to let go of material things. See, it, it's easy to say I love God, but then when I have to give up um, my money, that that's that's where it really starts to push us. Um, and we have to learn how to manage our money better because the money that we would have wasted on eating out or whatever we want to spend our money on, um, we now have to learn to give to God and use whatever's left in an honorable way to God. Um, so what is tithes and offering? People talk about it all the time. We know it has to do with money. We just don't know what it has to do with money. Tithe means the 10%, uh, uh, the, tenth per, uh, the tenth portion. It is 10% of, of whatever your income is. Um, and if you do not have, excuse me, if you do not have an income, um, tithes and offering teaches us to get a job and, and to work so that we can have an income so that we can tithe. Um, tithing is to teach us to fear God. It is to provide for uh, ministers. It is for a lot of different things. Um, but then there's offering, which is separate from uh, the tithe. What an offering is, is it's any free will contribution made. It can be money. It can be volunteer work. In fact, that's the next point. Um, all those things are offerings. However, an offering doesn't count as a tithe. The tithe is commanded by God. It is to teach us to uh, to fear God and to really revolve our lives and our finances around Him. Um, it is uh, it's given before the law was given. It's given in the law as well. It's given in it, it, it's reinforced at the time of Jesus. Um, and there's nothing in the Bible that ever says, "Hey, the the tithe the tithe is no longer required." Um, and there's an, there's one part, for instance, when Paul is writing the book, the, the, the church of Corinth in the letter of second Corinthians, where he's trying to get them to give a offering to something. He's not trying to get them to tithe. He's trying to get them to give an offering. And so some people will look at that passage and they'll say, Hey, uh, this means that tithes are no longer required, but Paul was talking about an offering, not a tithe. See, an offering is separate from tithe. Tithe is, is, is what we're required to give. Offering is what we decide to give, if that makes sense, okay? So um, what we see in the Bible is we see people going above and beyond that tithe quite frequently. Um, we see um, people selling everything that they had and giving all the money to the church and, you know, that kind of stuff. So nowhere has the idea of tithe and offering been done away with. It's actually more... Um, more encompassing now. Um, so okay, uh, volunteer work that counts as an offering. Giving uh, uh, besides money. Um, if you have like let's say for instance you have, you have chickens and you decide to give your eggs to people in the community, this is an offering as well. You know, or maybe you decide to give it to the pastor, whatever. That that is an offering, uh, but it's not a tithe. Um, sometimes we don't really want to pay a tithe, so we kind of try and make our own way but the thing is the tithe is another thing that it really helps us to connect with the church so what we do is is when we become a member of a church we're also giving them financial stability by being a member we're paying our tithes to that church and by doing that we are submitting to the church and we're submitting to god's structure and, and we're submitting to god and we're learning how to how to how to live uh, financially stable we're, we're living how to we're learning how to uh, how to really uh, do things right, and it all kind of builds together, you know. Um, going to church and, and tithe and offering, they're both connected, and paying tithes and offering is a form of worship, which is um, which is uh, talked about in reading the Bible and in our times of prayer, 
it, God will help us to find um, where what we can give as an offering or where we can give an offering. Um, so they're all kind of connected. All these lessons are definitely definitely connected, um, which is why they, why we uh, wrote this um, discipleship course with the focus being on um, the Christian basics. Um, so paying tithes uh, and giving offerings teach us to honor God. It teaches us to put him first in our lives. It teaches us to, to provide for his servants, the pastors, for instance. Um, missionaries that go around the world, our local church supports um, those missionaries that go to other countries. And then, see what I mean? It's, kind of, it, it's, it's, it's a way of, of using our money to further God's kingdom. Um, we use tithes money to run things like the Halloween event, the, the end of school year event, the Easter event. We do all these things with that money. Um, as far as some people think that the money just goes to the pastor's pocket, this is just not true, or it shouldn't be true. Um, pastors should definitely be on a salary, and if a pastor's, I, I'm personally against a pastor having too high of a salary either. Um, I'm kind of of the agree that the opinion that a pastor's salary shouldn't um, shouldn't go past, you know, uh, he shouldn't be the wealthiest person in the community. Let's just say that. Um, and so, so tithes and offering uh, uh, pays for the church ministries. Even the pastors, even me and Chuck and and, and Randy, we all pay tithes. Um, so it's not like, <laughs> it's not like, um, you know, we're just saying, hey, give us your money, and it doesn't go to us; it goes to the church. Um, we have to pay some of our tithes to the denomination that we're under, the Assemblies of God, um, and then we have to pay some of our tithes to the uh, local church. Um, and then once again, it's used for different things. The electric bill of the, of the church, you know, the gas bill, the water bill, the, you know, the, the trash bill, the different things to run the ministries. I mean, a lot of different things. Now, a ministry, all the ministry is, 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 is a service that somebody does. So, for instance, uh, Sunday morning service, that would be a ministry. Um, the Halloween event would be a ministry. So, um, the tithe is taught all throughout scripture. Um, and it teaches us, paying tithes and offering teaches us uh, to work instead of being lazy. See, what we want to do is sit on our butts all day and do nothing. <laughs> but sadly, we don't get to do that. Um, and so when we have to pay tithes and offering, all of a sudden we're more obligated to uh, to get up and do stuff. In fact, Paul said, if somebody's not willing to work, don't let them, you know, don't provide for them to eat either. He uh, and the New Testament tells us that, you know, to, to get up... <laughs> Offer butts and and, and, and and work. In fact, Paul didn't allow in, in the New Testament. Paul didn't allow um, the church to provide for uh, for uh, um, uh, widows who um, weren't old enough and uh, who weren't um, living correctly. Let's just leave it at that. So once again, we see that the idea of that, that Christians are obligated to just throw money away is completely not true. It's not the case at all. Um, it's, it's more about wisdom and about helping people and loving people. Sometimes not giving money is an act of love. And uh, so the church is not there as a bank account. Just because you gave doesn't mean that you get to draw something out. That's not how it works. Um, th there has to be a safeguard. You know, we get literally... Um, hundreds of people a month asking for money uh, when they could have gotten a job and, and, and spent wisely. Now, if we were to give um, to all these people, first off, we'd be helping them to be immature and to not grow. And then our church would run out of money because there's just – we wouldn't be able to. Our, our What we would be paying would be more than what we're getting in. Um, so instead, we help people to help themselves to, to, to get up and, and to get going. Um, we help people get jobs. We help people to, to rearrange their lives. Uh, we help people to, to stop spending wastefully on their credit cards, all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, tithes and offering is the starting point. That's where it all gets down to. We learn to, uh, to put God first in our finances. We learn to spend our money wisely. Um, we learn to work and uh, we learn you know how, how to incorporate these things and as we do them at first it's really really difficult but in time it becomes just a it becomes really easy you know i i pay tithes every single month and it's not it's it's not like it's um i, I mean it's not like it's it's something that, that's like overly difficult it's 
relatively simple. Um, and you know, you just get used to it, and you get you learn how to adapt to it. And uh, as you as you seek after God, you know, God blesses you, and and he and he really has a way of helping you as you're seeking him. At first, it seems like, oh, this is going to be too difficult. But then God just comes alongside of you, and he just lifts you up, and he just, he just helps you to do it. And pretty soon, you're going to be realizing that you're spending more and more time in the Word, more and more time in prayer. And it's just going to be such a blessing to you, such a blessing to your life. You're going to start thinking differently. You're going to stop you know, just being negative all the time. You're going to feel more encouraged. Um, you're, you're going to have hope uh, when you don't feel like you can go much longer. Um, it's just such a great... Um, such a great, uh, such a great thing to be saved, uh, and to be involved in a church is is, is so um, so freeing, so liberating, so uh, encouraging. So I want to encourage you um, to, to to stay in there. Don't give up. I'm super super excited for you, uh, uh, you with this decision to become a member of the church. Um, I, I really hope that um, you're blessed, uh, just the same as you're blessing others. Um, and uh, let's end this with a little word of prayer. Lord, I just pray that you would touch those uh, who are trying to be new members of this church. Uh, help them to learn from you. Help them to learn your ways. Lord, help them to put you first. Uh, help them to just to just seek after you with their whole heart, Lord. And as they seek you, help them to find you. Um, I pray that uh, they would just they would just reap the blessings of seeking you with their whole heart. That they would see how, what a blessing it is to seek you. And uh, help them not to not to get discouraged as things happen, Lord, but just to keep seeking after you with their whole hearts. To have a have a good, healthy prayer life. To stay in the stay reading the Bible, stay in the Word, and to really learn from you. Uh, to 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 revolve their finances around you through tithes and offering. Uh, to keep keep going to church and, and to not back out. Uh, Lord, just help them through these different things. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing. And uh, we know that you're definitely on the move. And uh, Help them to have a, a very fruitful and beneficial time of worship for you, um, not just through music, but through their lives, Lord. Uh, we love you. Amen.